I think like I think we've had this conversation before as well about you you can't design in Palo Alto for the world. Like you just can't. You can't design in one of the most privileged centers of the world and assume that a child in Sri Lanka is going to be able to relate. A child in India is able to understand. Um yeah, I think it's a problem. I and I understand now since I'm running a company, it is costly to personalize. Like mm-hmm. it is difficult. It's not easy. But I think you need to intentionally build that into your design process from day one. To know that just because you tested with a few fancy schools in Palo Alto, that doesn't mean it's going to work in like South Asia. Yeah. And I'm curious also about the technology that you use for TV. What role does it have? Mm-hmm. And and when you design tools with technology, what are some of the guidelines that you keep in mind? Yeah, I think I'll I'll talk a little bit about kind of the design practices and guidelines. Mm-hmm. I think one of the big things we always focus on is like three things. One is design for joy. How do we build, whether it's a color palette and, and you've seen Tilly, it's kind of really bright and fussy and warm and happy. So how do we design for joy? Um, for teachers, for students, as well as the parents who might see and engage with the application, how do we design for joy? And the second is trust. Um, how are we, both in terms of the technology we use, in terms of the data we collect, the way we store data, the way we use data, the way our interfaces are designed, how do we build for trust um, in a way that parents are able to trust us and learners are also able to trust us? Um, and the second thing is safety. Um, I think working with children, designing for children is a huge responsibility. And um, with every single, every sentence that's worded or a picture that's used, we always vet for safety. Um, So I think those are the three big values that we try to bring into the design process when we Um, design. And I'm wondering with all the different experiences you've had uh, as an entrepreneur, researcher, uh, a learning experience designer, uh, what... What have you learned from these different experiences and how has it shaped your perspective on social impact? Everything you do is a working prototype. Um, And I think that's, I think both are coming out of Stanford. I think that was my big learning. Whatever you do, whether it's an email you write or a project you start or a product Mm -hmm. you design or a conversation you have with someone, it's always a working prototype. There's always room to improve it and build on it. And I think that's my approach to social impact work as well. Um, you have to have a practice of reflection Um, because every time you do something with a community, there has to be a practice where you look back and see what worked well, what didn't, what am I going to change the next time? Um, Because communities are changing, you're working with people and there's no way there's one size fits all solution. Do you think you might have more impact by starting your own venture Mm -hmm. or by joining a nonprofit organization or by being one person within a large company? Yeah. Because that's always a question that is yeah. like that's lingering. True. Yeah. I think like with any problem you want to solve, I think that first step is really finding that problem you're obsessed with uh, rather than going into it from a solution perspective and spending a lot of time being a student of the problem to really Mm -hmm. learn from the problem and about the problem. And I think as you learn about the problem, like whether it was, for example, for me, it really started from kind of this child sexual abuse. Like that was a space I wanted to work in and a problem that I wanted to solve. And I think it's when I took the system's view of it and spent an year really learning from the problem that I realized, all right, these were all the people in this space. These are all the organizations in this space. These are all the processes that are currently at play. These are the organizations or startups that are devising solutions. Um, These are the people involved and these are their values. These are their mindsets. So you really get this kind of a good ecosystem view of it. And I think first to be a good student of the problem. And I think the second is finding out what, brings you joy in the everyday because i think some people get so much joy by leading and setting the vision and the blueprint and gathering a group of 10 people to kind of build something or make that change happen um other people are just great operators they are really good at taking the vision of someone and really bringing it to life 
and um i think people get different there's different ways in which people find meaning and value and i think there has to be a match between the problem you want to solve and what brings you joy um and i think it's finding that intersection that is important mm. i think that i saw who real activists were um i think i'm not even close to that i think these are people who breathe and live and just so strongly believe in a very different future um you know climate activists who believe in a future where the climate is safe where we have a different way of life um and you know social justice activists who see a reform social justice a world of social justice and where the criminal processes have changed where laws are done differently and so on um and i think these are people who done so much personal sacrifice to bring and make that world a reality and i i deserve but yeah got it yeah yeah kind of it, you need to have that intense optimism about the future yeah. in a way yeah no that's a good word i agree it's this sense of optimism for a different world that you mm. want to leave behind and and these are people who will never enjoy the the benefits of their activism and they know that like the world they're trying to create wouldn't be created in their lifetime but they're spending every living second for that world that they would never get to enjoy and i think that's like the ultimate form of like sacrifice and hmm it's fine what do you know? i just <laughs> what do you think should be or could be the role of activism in education Mm. Yeah. You know, I I think education in itself is an act of like activism. Um to be a teacher is an act of activism and resistance.